Welcome back. In this short subunit, we're going to discuss the mitigation of damages. It's often said that an aggrieved party, right, the non-breaching party, has a duty to mitigate her damages, a duty to mitigate her injury, which is a duty to mitigate the damages that the other party will have to pay for her breach. It's really not a duty to mitigate in the sense that the breaching party could sue you if you didn't mitigate damages. The idea is that if you could have mitigated, excuse me, if you could have mitigated damages, if you could have avoided some injury that the breach caused you, then your recovery will be reduced by that amount. Right? How do you mitigate damages? Well, generally you mitigate damages by finding substitute performance. So imagine that I own a restaurant and you're a contractor and I hire you to do some work on my restaurant to repair it, to renovate it, whatever. And it's going to be closed for the period during the renovation. And you repudiate the contract, you breach, and you walk away. And it causes a delay in my restaurant reopening, which means I'm going to lose profits. Right? How could I mitigate the damages? Well, I could mitigate the damages and reduce my injury, avoid injury, if I go out quickly and find substitute performance, find someone else to do the work. If I do not do that, and I could have done that, then any injury that I suffer that I could have avoided by going out and finding substitute performance, I will not be entitled to recover for that injury. That is the nature of the mitigation of damages. Let's talk about mitigation of damages in a specific context. Let's talk about it in the context of the service contract. So we have an employment contract. We have a contract between an employer and an employee for a duration of time. It's not employment at will. Uh, or we have a situation that involves an independent contractor, let's say a homeowner and a house painter. What is the duty of the employee to mitigate damages when the employer breaches the contract, right? Where the employer uh, terminates the employee in breach of the contract. Similarly, what is the duty of the independent contractor, the house painter, to mitigate damages when the homeowner, when the other party terminates the contract wrongfully. In both situations, the mitigation of damages, the avoidance of injury involves the employee or the independent contractor going out and finding substitute work, going out and finding substitute uh, job. This is the rule. The employee and the independent contractor, part of their duty to mitigate damages is to find substitute employment, but they do not have to take a job that would be substantially different from the one under the contract. So in the case of the employee, imagine the employer uh, terminates, wrongfully terminates the employee. Now the employee is out looking for another job. The employee does not have to take a job that is substantially different from the one she had with the employer. What would be substantially different? Well, maybe if the salary is substantially different. Maybe if the geographical location is substantially different. Maybe if the nature of the work is substantially different, or maybe the position, the title of the position, vice president, president, whatever, maybe if that's substantially different, she does not have to take that job to mitigate the damages. Same with the independent contractor, right? The house painter wouldn't have to take a job as a clerk in a store to mitigate the damages that she would suffer, excuse me, to mitigate the injury that she would suffer because the uh, homeowner uh, wrongfully terminated the contract. Okay, so let's continue talking about mitigation of damages in the situation where the employer wrongfully terminates an employee or where the other party wrongfully terminates the contract with an independent contractor. 
often the aggrieved employee or the aggrieved independent contractor's recovery from the breaching party will be reduced. Under what circumstances will recovery be reduced? Well, if the employee or the independent contractor accepts any other employment and the employee or the independent contractor could not have done both jobs. In other words, the employee or the under independent contractor could not have taken the substitute employment and performed under the original contract. Now, here's a really important point. The rule says that your recovery will be reduced by any substitute job you accept. Remember, the rule is you don't have to accept a substitute job if that substitute job is substantially different from the one you are going to perform under the contract. But if you do accept a job that is substantially different from the one that you would have performed under the contract and you could not have performed the substitute job and the original contract at the same time, then your recovery will be reduced by whatever amount you're going to receive under that substitute job. So if uh, I am an employee and I am the manager of a tire store and I am wrongfully terminated from my employment and I go accept a job as a lifeguard in a local pool, I did not have to accept that job as part of my duty to mitigate damages, but I did. And let's say that I could not have performed both the lifeguard job and the, the tire store job at the same time. So whatever compensation I receive as the lifeguard, that will be applied to reduce the damages that my employer, the tire store, would have to pay me for breaching the contract. Uh, the second circumstance, excuse me, the second circumstance that could result in my recovery being reduced is that I could have found another job, but I didn't. So this is how this works. The burden of proof in the case of the employer-employee is on the employer. So what would happen is that the employee would sue the employer for breach of contract seeking damages. And the employer would say, listen, the employee did not mitigate damages. Now, the burden of proof would be on the employer to show that there was other employment, other substantially similar employment available to the employee that the employee did not take, right? So I would put on that evidence that there was substantially similar employment uh, that the employee could have taken. And then the burden would shift to the employee to show why she did not take that employment. So I, as the employer, might show that there were lots of jobs available for the employee that were substantially similar to the one under our contract. And the employee would show, listen, I applied for those jobs, I didn't get those jobs, and therefore my recovery should not be reduced. In the case of the independent contractor, the independent contractor will have the burden of proof. So imagine I'm a homeowner and I hire a house painter and uh, I uh, wrongfully terminate the house painter's contract. The house painter has the initial burden to show that she could not find substitute employment. Let's take a quick look at some examples. Let's look at the case of an employment contract where the employer breaches the contract. What are the employee's duty to mitigate the damages? And let's look at the case of an independent contractor where the other party breaches the contract. What are the obligations of the independent contractor to mitigate the damages? So let's say that a university wrongfully terminates a tenured professor. So the university will be liable to damages to professor. Professor has suffered an injury, but professor 
has a duty to mitigate damages, right? To find substitute employment. What if the professor is offered a job as a security guard? Would the professor have to take that job as part of her duty to mitigate her damages? And the answer is no. She does not have to take a job that is substantially different from her job. Uh, a security guard is a substantially different job from a tenured professor job. But what if the professor actually takes the job as a security job, a security guard? Well, then any money she makes as a security guard will go to mitigate the damages that the university will have to pay the professor. So even though she didn't have to take that job, if she does, then whatever money she receives as a security guard will go to mitigate the damages that university will have to pay to her for breach of contract. Now, there's one important proviso. The money she makes as a security guard will only go to mitigate her damages if she could not perform both jobs at the same time. So if the security guard job is a part-time job that she could have done simultaneously with her job as a professor, then it will not go to mitigate the damages that the university has to pay her. All right, let's say in our independent contractor situation that homeowner wrongfully terminates a contract with house painter. House painter takes a job painting another house during the same time period. Will that go to mitigate house painter's damages? Will that go to mitigate homeowner, what homeowner has to compensate house painter for homeowner's breach of this contract? And the answer is yes, with one important proviso. Could house painter have done both jobs at the same time? The house painter, if the house painter is one of the house painters that paints houses by herself and doesn't hire people to help her paint a house, then she couldn't do both jobs at the same time. And then this substitute job will go to mitigate the damages that homeowner has to pay house painter. But if she's a house painter that hires people to do the work for her and she just kind of supervises, she could run from job to job supervising. So she could have taken both jobs. And under those circumstances, this second job is not a substitute job. It is another job that she could have taken. So it would not go to mitigate the damages.